Hello, everyone. You're watching Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Okuntoye. President Bola Ametinubu is back in Nigeria after attending the 37th session of the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa. This year's AU Summit is first for President, uh, President Tinubu since he assumed office on the 29th of May this year. During the summit, he held bilateral meetings with the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and the President of Brazil, where they discussed issues of mutual cooperation as well as development. And in his address to the African Union Summit, he declared that Nigeria was ready to host the African Central Bank expected to commence in 2028. The President also announced that ECOWAS is ready to dialogue with Niger, Burkina Faso and Mali, uh, and Guinea rather, um, towards the restoration of democracy in those countries. Well, last week, the president met with state governors over rising costs of food and inflation and top on the agenda at that meeting, which held at the council chambers of the presidential Villa Abuja, is the current food crisis and how the federal government will partner with subnationals to improve the cost of living. After extensive deliberations, the president and governors agreed to work together to solve the problems and tackle the economic pressure being faced by the citizens. Uh, let's take a look now at some of the key takeaways from um, that particular meeting last week. Um, uh, it was resolved that there is need to address insecurity affecting farming and food production by recruiting more police personnel to strengthen the force and put in place a mechanism that will engender state police instead of the vigilantes that are being used in some states. He also charged the governors to strengthen their forest rangers and arm them to keep all the forests uh, safe from criminals. There's also the need to increase collaboration between state and federal government to engender local food production, with the president advising against the idea of food importation and price control. The president directed the Inspector General of Police, the National Security Advisor, and the DSS to monitor warehouses, hardened food items, across the country. He also charged the governors to pay attention to livestock development. President Buhari pleaded with governors to ensure that all salary arrears and gratuities are paid to workers and pensioners respectively as a way to put some money into the hands of the people since states are now getting more monthly revenue allocation. He told the governors precisely to spend the money, don't spend the people. He also did ask them to create more economic opportunities for the youths to keep them productively engaged. Now let's bring you an excerpt from the president's speech in Addis Ababa over the weekend. The, the change to create an era of trust and accord. We are doing everything possible, front door, back door diplomacy, to really bring peace and stability and democratic governance to West Africa. Now let's talk about state police and some of the um, new interventions that the federal government is now beginning to come up with in response to the food insecurity and other burning challenges facing Nigeria at this time. I'm joined by an APC Chief Tin and Policy Analyst, Dana Lunje, who joins us live from our Abuja studio. Thank you for joining us on the program this evening. So you're advocating... Thank um, you for having me again. Oh, absolutely, you're welcome. I see that you're advocating a multifaceted approach um, that will include local government and judiciary autonomy alongside the creation of state police. Talk to us about the connection here, precisely between state police and local government autonomy. Yeah, first of all, in discussing this subject, I want to commend the uh, efforts of Mr. President and the 33 state governors who met and arrived at this decision to pursue the establishment of state police. 
Uh, indeed, it has been a very long awaited uh, initiative. The connection between the establishment of state police and the local government autonomy to usher in uh, peace and progress of the society is from the economic angle of it, once the local governments are granted autonomy, particularly financial autonomy, they are able to develop the rural areas where the hardship is felt most. They are able to, in the process of doing that, create employment for the ideal youths in the environment. Of course, most of the uh, insecurity or the spotlights for uh, or flashpoints of insecurity in the country are domiciled in the rural areas. What does that tell us? It tells us clearly that something urgently is needed to be done to set those areas on the path of development. Mm -hmm. And this entails the creation of jobs, like I said, for the idle youths in the environment. As it's it been said, an idle mind or an idle uh, mind is a devil's workshop. By the time we engage the youth of this country, particularly those who reside in the rural areas, I'm sure we'll be able to attain some level of appreciable peace in the country. So I hear you, Mr. The connection there. Yeah, um, the, the, this autonomy that you're talking about, we understand, provides um, the financial resources and legal framework to work as an independent tier of government. But performance at that level will also largely depend on who is running it, right? Just like it is with who is governor yes. and who is president. Yes. Is there a sense to which you think exactly. an autonomy will raise people's participation in, for instance, who emerges um, LGA chairman? Because the death of quality leadership at the grassroots has also been a big challenge. Well, um, autonomy, granting autonomy to the local uh, government in Nigeria will further deepen democracy in Nigeria because it will allow for a participatory democracy and the people at the grassroots will be involved in decision making processes especially on issues that borders and affect their lives directly so you see clearly it will strengthen uh, democracy. So aside the financial autonomy, I also mentioned, of course, the legal framework for it. It will afford the people the real opportunity to vote for people of their choices that can represent their interests and accommodate their plight. Because the current system we have at hand allows for the governors to cherry pick those they feel they can relate with, to either be the caretaker chairman or even the elected uh, local government chairman. This is made possible because it is the state uh, uh, electoral body that conducts elections of the local government. So when the INEC begins to conduct the elections of local government like it does to the state elections, National Assembly election, and the presidential election, then the people will have been uh, afforded the opportunity to elect the real and true representative at the local government level that will deliver the dividends of democracy to them as 
occupants of positions in the third tier of governments in Nigeria. That is what I'm advocating. These things should yeah. work hand in hand. The establishment mm. of the state police, because with the local government authority, the uh, man management of security situation will be made easier because the capacity of the security architecture of the local government will be built. The resources will be there to advance the necessary and relevant infrastructure that will support the security operations in the local government. More so, the chiefs in the local government and even other uh, authorities in the local government are the closest to the glass, grassroots. They know and can identify exactly the residents of the environment. So uh, security management at that level, <coughs> with the cooperation of an independent authority, will allow for uh, quick uh, and rapid responses to security challenges. I was speaking recently with the caretaker chairman of my local government, uh, Joseph Oko, Honorable Joseph Oko, and he mentioned something that, you know, is quite appalling. Because he says whenever there's a security challenge and he tries to call the DPO of my own community, particularly Orokam, the excuse he keeps getting is the lack of vehicle to mobilize the security officers, the policemen on ground, to the scene of crime or any incident. Mm. So a particular situation arose, and I put a call through to him to ask that he notify the police immediately. Then he said he would be ridiculing himself because even when he does that, they are not likely to attend to the situation because of the lack of vehicles for their movement. When these local government <coughs> authorities are empowered, are allowed to have their financial autonomy, I'm sure they are able to address some of these uh, basic and fundamental, you know, uh, either infrastructure or uh, mobility. I hear you. For the security agencies in the local government to address the security challenge in the res Indeed. various and respective local governments. That indeed is the expectation. You know, I, I'm just wondering what is fueling your optimism that um, performance will automatically improve with autonomy. Because you mentioned in your press statement that the federal government is currently overstretched uh, and that the performance of most state governors uh, leave much to be desired. You know, my question really would be, are we also considering and factoring in the quality of the leaders that would emerge? Because a lot you know, matters. For instance, the governors that we're talking about were elected and they are in charge of humongous resources to the intent that the president recently asked them to pay salaries and pay gratuity and to also, you know, take some, some of the burdens off the federal government. But, you know, one of the challenges, one of the concerns that have been raised is the fact that governors, you know, have the capacity to exploit the state police forces to suppress dissenting voices. And I heard you also in your press statement proposing a judiciary reform that um, in a way jettisons the immunity governors currently enjoy. The concern, however, has been how multiple litigations can pose a major distraction from governance. You know, we hear more than often these days governors saying they can now focus more on governors after election petitions. So imagine adding others through the lifetime of their tenors. What really is your point, you know, when you consider all of these challenges? Well, to start first with the uh, aspect of the local government uh, autonomy, the real pools where the citizens express their dissatisfaction or appreciation of a system is at the local government pools because they have the opportunity to vote the people that can truly and genuinely represent them. And I believe once they are given that opportunity, there are also a legal framework to checkmate 
to provide checks and balances for the government at that level. So once the leaders are elected and they are not governing in line or acc accordance with their expectation, they will mm -hmm. use the instrument instrumentality of the parliament at that level to remove such a leader. And aside that, also they have the right either to vote back such a leader or vote him out. So with that, I believe that uh, the people at the grassroots will attain some level of uh, uh, satisfaction with governance. Then secondly, talking about the issue of the establishment of the state police, yes, indeed, uh, the citizens have expressed fears and concern that these uh, governors will suppress uh, uh, the voice of the uh, decent voices and then um, also they will use it to oppress uh, oppositions in their states. That was why I suggested the judicial reform that will uh, uh, that would bar the governors from you know, uh, carrying out such, making out such oppressive measures against uh, innocent citizens. Uh, every policy, like we know, comes with its pros and cons. Uh, much as these issues are expected from some of the governors, because we have seen even in this situation where the, uh, the state police have not been established, some governors still, you know, influence the commissioner of police in the state to either oppress or repress uh, innocent citizens. So I figure that we can't throw away the, the bath water with the baby. Somehow we must take a very, very decisive step and action to uh, remedy the, uh, the Nigeria or the society from the current uh, situation we find, security situation we find ourselves in the country today. And that is why I am suggesting that uh, the legal framework should uh, remove the immunity from the governors, particularly on issues that borders on human rights violations. Any governor who violates the rights of the indigents at the state level or even at the federal level, any president who does that, using the, st uh, the federal police, why they enjoy the immunity, immunity uh, against uh, corruption charges and other charges that may distract them, just like you mentioned, because of course, litigation distract public office holders as witnessed from the election petition tribunals, which lasted for almost a period of year, one year, which was a total distraction to the governors, to the lawmakers, and even to the president himself. So uh, flowing from that, it is important to uh, give some level of protection to public office holders, particularly those in executive capacities. But be that as it may, it is also important to protect the rights of citizens that have given up their, uh, their rights to security to the states. They also have to be protected. And one way they can be protected is to remove the immunity that the governors have over litigations that border on, borders on human rights violation. When you remove it, the governors, that will serve as a deterrent to the governors. They will become uh, more careful in uh, dealing with uh, citizens, especially when it comes to issues of using the force in the Did state. Mr. Onje, any it sounds like you're is, saying... Any governor that is found wanting... Yes. It sounds like you're saying that um, the issue of state police wouldn't do us much good if we don't get autonomy for the judiciary as well as the local government. Is that what you're saying precisely? Yes. I'm suggesting that uh, all of this thing should be considered along. Uh, it should be a multi 
full approach, approach to solve How feasible, the though, is this suggestion? Because the Ninth Assembly made some progress uh, in this regard, but met stiff opposition from, from the governors. You, you can't get this done without at least a third of the houses of assembly across the country. It's a big ask. Sounds a lot like a long-term project that may not see the light of the day in the lifespan of this administration. How optimistic are you in that regard? No, it, it will be achievable. Desperate situations require desperate measures to solve. That problem we all thought, the problem of illiteracy we all thought was the problem of a poor farmer in a forgotten corner in the Northeast or the Northwest has become the problem of all of us today together. So that problem of abject poverty and deprivation that we all thought was the problem of the poorest in the society today has turned to the problem of all of us. So this is the time for all men of goodwill and patriotic citizens to rise to the occasion. All bottlenecks in either ministry, department, or agencies must be jettisoned into the dustbin of history given the circumstance we are in Nigeria today. The lawmakers must rise to the occasion. We commend the Ninth Senate. They went that far and they were frustrated because they didn't get the requisite percentage of vote from the state houses of assembly. But now that the governors are on board and are also um, agreeing to the state police, which is what I believe they have always wanted. It should be give and take. What the citizens also want is that very governance that is for them, about them, mm. should be given back to them, which is the local government. Because as defined by uh, Abraham Lincoln, democracy, government of the people, by the people and for the people. They need to feel the impact of governance at the rural areas. And if Mr. President really wants to solve the problem, the security and economic challenges we're having in the country today, this is the first thing that he must, as a matter of urgency and necessity, mm -hmm. consider in resolving the problem we find ourselves in the country today. I because hear you most clearly. of the monies that he even most of the monies he released in recent time are to cushion the attendant effects of the subsidy remover that went into the hands of governors and also some relief materials that went into the hands of National Assembly members. The impact was not felt commensurate to the funds that were disbursed. So I would suggest very and recommend very strongly to Mr. President to consider the local government autonomy so that right. once the, the local government has gets its fund directly, it's able to develop the local areas, build the capacity, Absolutely. create jobs for the youth. Absolutely, Mr. Onje. I'm afraid that's our time. We've completely run out of time. Um, well, we must also bear in mind that it is beyond what Mr. President can achieve alone. It will require, you know, the involvement of the legislature, not only the National Assembly, but even the Houses of Assembly. It's also important that we note that at the basis of this insecurity challenge we're talking about are issues like poverty and unemployment. The National Bureau of Statistics just recently reported a significant rise in the unemployment rate in the third quarter of the last year. And um, we're looking forward to see how... Um, the Tinubu administration will address this in the coming days. Daniel Onje is an APC chieftain and policy analyst. He joins us live from our Abuja studio. Mr. Onje, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you so much. That's our show, everyone. Thanks for being a part of it. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I'm back at 7 with all of the top stories from across this, the country. I'm Nifemi Ogutoye.